Okay, hello and welcome to uh, our autumn 2014 CRM webcast series. I'm Jason Gumpert, and we are here today for the final session in the series, our CRM Solution Showcase. It has been a busy uh, autumn for us. Uh, starting back in September, we ran, uh, we've uh, been running a series of sessions on uh, CRM-related topics for Microsoft Dynamics. And uh, if you missed any of these sessions, I suggest you go back to the uh, nsdynamicsworld.com webcast section and seek them out. Uh, they are all available on demand, um, the ones uh, other than maybe the ones from yesterday. Uh, just like to note right now that we, we couldn't really run the session without the support of um, our sponsors, and I want to thank them for being a part of it. Today, representatives from each firm uh, will be presenting on their vision for uh, CRM-related capabilities in, in areas like marketing, uh, in data integration, and, uh, and content management uh, in the Dynamics CRM space. Uh, we have, uh, we'll, we'll be beginning in just a moment, and we do invite you to ask your questions in the audience. You can use the Q&A block that you should see to the right of the slides. And you can ask your question anytime. We'll be saving time at the end to have our presenters uh, take those. So uh, without uh, any further delay, please allow me to introduce our first presenter of the day, and that is Andy Thompson of IBM Silverpop. Andy, I am going to open your line up and pass control to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate everyone's time today, and I'm uh, definitely a little, little short on it. We only have a few minutes to kind of discuss this, so I'm going to definitely pare it down, throw a few scenarios in there for you. But today we're going to talk about the Core Motive Solution, which uh, is actually now an IBM company. We are uh, both uh, Silverpop and Core Motive, so part of IBM. The Core Motive Solution is the directly embedded solution that works right inside of Dynamics CRM. So everything that I'm going to show you today is going to be right inside of Dynamics. We can work with any version from 4.0, 2011, 2013. We are already 2015 ready to go, so as soon as that takes place, you'll be able to uh, use Cormotives fully inside of the 2015 environment. So with that being said, today what we're going to talk about is just how we're going to be able to help you to really automate a lot of these manual processes that you work today. And it's going to greatly impact your marketing teams by having all that information in one place. Today, chances are you're probably working in multiple databases with very disparate solutions. Perhaps you're dealing with a, a third-party uh, integrated solution that isn't working quite the way that you want it to. And you're also not giving that same visibility to your salespeople that are out in the marketplace today. Being able to show them what type of things are happening on your website, what kind of interactions are you seeing from your emails, what kind of forms are being submitted, even some social aspects as well. So by being able to create that visibility and that universal information set, you're going to be able to grant that access to those people that need it by using the Cormotive solution. We are an unlimited user license product, so everyone who has access to CRM will also have access to Core Motives. And by having that information available there as well, you're going to be able to, to grant and deny access using our security roles too. So a little bit about us. We are the number one Dynamics marketing solution in our space today. We currently have over 2,000 clients that use Core Motives on a regular basis. And we have over 1 billion emails under contract. And between us and our parent company, Silverpop, Last month alone, we sent just shy of 5 billion emails. So just in sheer numbers, that's almost one to every person on the planet every single day. But it's not just about batching and blasting anymore. With an email marketing automation solution and being a marketer yourself in some respects, you want to make sure that the email is getting to where it needs to go. So by maintaining a level of over 98% deliverability, we're making sure those emails are getting to those people that need that information, as well as able to be seen in their inbox. And we also have clients in 45 countries, and we're continuing to grow that as well from a global footprint. We are dynamic CRM experts. We've been developing our solution to work with version 1.0 now all the way up through 2015. We're also a global marketing execution company, so we do support over a dozen different languages. And our HTML editor supports many, many more than that. So you will be able to converse with numerous types of languages all across the world if you do need that global application. Not only are we dynamic CRM experts, we're also sales and marketing process specialists. So we do have a full professional services team on staff. We have professional marketers here as well. So we'll be able to help you with such things as thought leadership, campaign management, even HTML services if you're coming off of a separate platform or perhaps you prefer to use a different type of HTML editor. So all those things are going to be available for you with us as needed. 
All right, so instead of spending a whole lot of time on the slides today, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, sorry guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump directly into the solution itself. All right, so like I said before, we are an embedded solution, so we do live right inside of Dynamic CRM. And here we are right here. So when I click on the Core Motive solution, we're now going to be able to see all of the custom entities that Core Motives has to offer. Everything from the email marketing options, the web content and intelligence for tracking your website, all of the social media options, web forms, surveys, landing pages, all of the lead scoring that you're going to need, as well as our nurture marketing and event management. So this is going to be a pared down version of this demonstration, so I'm very quickly just going to run through a scenario for you to show you the power of what Core Motives can do for you and everyone in your organization today. So first things first, what happens when someone first interacts with you? How are you supposed to track this information? How can we help you to, to really see what's going on? Well, we can do that by giving you a little piece of tracking script, and you'll then be able to see all of the web traffic that's taking place from the individual perspective. Core Motives is going to allow you to be extremely pinpoint, dynamic, personal, and relevant with every single thing we do, even being able to automate these responses and have this information track all the way back to the lead and contact level. So with this information view right here, and it may be a little bit of an eye chart for you, depending on how big your screen is, we're going to be able to track all the way back to the individual IP, and utilizing cookies, we'll be able to see exactly who's on your site, how long they're there, and even what pages they're visiting while they're there. Now, this information is going to be made readily available to everyone because it's going to be in that CRM contact or lead. So if I was to pull up this information from a contact or lead record, depending on who it is that I'm trying to, to find out more information about, I can do that very quickly and very easily by just pulling up a contact or lead record. And from inside of that contact or lead record, I'm then able to pull in all of my custom entities as well, including those page views that we were talking about. So now from that individual perspective, I've got a lot of great insight into what this individual is doing, from the pages they're visiting, how many sessions they have, perhaps there's a campaign we've attributed to certain options that are here. What kind of visit is it? Is it a page landing, perhaps a form submittal or a social sign-in? And then we have that referring URL as well, even being able to search out keywords depending on if it's a Google or a Bing-like search. So think about all the information we've just been able to capture here from this perspective and how we're going to be best able to target this person. And because we're able to use different options for reporting, we can even create different system charts or maybe dashboards we'd like to be able to utilize this information. Because we are completely embedded in CRM, all of the custom entities we give you from the, the options to be able to track all this web information, the form submittals, email interactions, it's all completely reportable on, and you can build them into your own dashboards today. So here's an example right here of one of our chart panes to see how he likes to interact with us directly. Maybe I want to see what campaigns this person is spending the most time checking us out on. So I'm then able to target them very specifically. And just the relevant conversations we're able to build from there. So now that I have this information and we know they're on your website, how are they supposed to interact with you? Well, we can do that very quickly by giving them access to a web form or a survey right on our CRM. So with these different forms and surveys, we now have the option to be able to create I'm very quickly able to create a very nice looking survey or web form that you can completely map back to anywhere in Dynamic CRM, depending on where you're wanting the information to travel to. We can also help you to deduplicate your database by searching out current leads and contacts, or if they don't exist, creating those brand new leads. Maybe I wanted to give them access to autofill sections of that form using social sign-in. But the biggest thing here is going to be just creating this form very quickly from a checkbox or a checklist, different types of fields that are available from a pick list that already exists in CRM, even a file upload. So now that I've chosen my particular fields, I can very easily map this particular field depending on what it is I'm trying to do. So I could have different types of leads or contact fields depending on where I would like this particular information to go, and then I map it. And you'll keep in mind also that I haven't left CRM yet. All the information I'm creating is happening right here. Now, this is great information, but what we're really trying to do is help you to automate these processes, to be able to stay in front of those people that need this information and be able to give it to them immediately. So we can then begin to add these actions. Perhaps I want to automatically add them to a list based on choices or responses. Maybe create an autorespond or even a workflow, because we understand that your CRM is different than everyone else's in the world. The workflow options we give you the availability to use can launch or execute a workflow you've already created 
that isn't currently in the, the feature sets that we have today. Perhaps even a follow-up activity for your sales rep to follow up on. So now that we have this information and we're ready to go ahead and map this out, I can just choose where I want this to go. Maybe I want to know how old this person is and then be able to add them to a certain contact or lead marketing list immediately. Maybe it's content I've already created and I'd like to be able to send them an autoresponded email. So now that all this information is now available for me to be able to trigger out of almost immediately. So think about some of the things that you can do with this yourselves, being able to always stay in front of that, that new contact, that new lead. Maybe this is for a service request or perhaps it's something you put in front of a white paper or a case study. And then I can deploy the form very quickly and very easily in a number of different ways. Here's a quick view of what one of these forms is going to look like. You can embed it into an iframe. You can use it as a pop-up or anything else. And maybe you wanted to use some of our CAPTCHA options that are available here as well. All right. So now that we have this information and they've been added to that particular marketing list, how are we going to target them? Let's do that now. So when we're creating different mailing options that are available, depending on what it is that we're trying to do, we can very quickly and very easily create as customized or as simplistic an email as we need it to be. So with this information we have, we're already using all of the same lists and all of the same campaigns you've already created in Dynamics CRM today. So by having all this information right here in one place, think about how much better your lists are going to be, how much better and more relevant your content is going to be, and also being able to manage that single, single database and having that single sign-in scenario. We can also create multiple types of subscription centers for you. So that means that instead of just giving someone the option to globally unsubscribe, we're now going to be able to allow your recipient to choose the information they'd like to receive. So if you're currently offering a newsletter, maybe it's an industry profile or a case study or a white paper that you'd like to send out, maybe it's a new service update or a promotional email, you can now give those people the options to choose and you'll be able to send them the information that's most important to them. Now here's an example of our WYSIWYG-like editor, and you'll be able to create your emails right here as you need to, possibly creating multiple templates as well that will live right inside of CRM, because you'll own all of your own HTML as well as all of your own data that you capture too. If you currently use those particular templates that you like, then you can always copy and paste the HTML right into our editor and be able to re-render them. Or if you need some help with that, we give you 40 free system samples that you're going to be able to use, depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. We also give you lots of options for dynamic content to be able to add. So if I wanted to greet that person specifically, I can by using different types of merge fields that are available. And then I'll be able to completely vary the content of the email using our multi-content creation option here. So depending on certain criteria that may exist, I can even vary the message itself. All right. Now we do have a number of other options on this, but for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right over to what the actual analytics side of things are and how we capture this information. So here's an email that we've already sent. And to be able to track what's taking place on this email, we can do that very quickly by viewing the interactions of this email. And once again, I'm still inside of Dynamics and we're tracking all the opens, the clicks, hard bounces, soft bounces, unsubscribes, whatever may have taken place. And I'll then be able to see all this information right here if I wanted to sort it out and get an idea about what's taking place. All right. So what happens if someone does unsubscribe? And we do have that thing called can spam compliance today as well as Castle. And we'd like to be able to make sure that these people are no longer gonna receive emails if they're a hard bouncer and unsubscribe. Well, Core Motives is going to take care of that for you. So as soon as this email is sent, I'm sorry, as soon as that person makes that choice, we're now going to automatically opt this person out for bulk email from then on. And even if that person is added to a specific marketing list, we're still going to suppress them from receiving the email. We're also going to deduplicate for you. So in case you have multiple people that show up on the same list, or perhaps you're using multiple lists on the same email and they have that same person in that criteria as well. You can rest assured that that person is only going to receive one email per blast. Okay. So if you do want to see some additional features, I'm more than happy to run additional demonstration times. I know I'm pretty close to being out of it today. So if you would like to find out more about the Core Motive solution, I'm happy to schedule you for a one-on-one -on -one demonstration. We also have a live public demo, 11 o'clock every Wednesday, every week.
and that's Eastern time. So please feel free to join me for the additional time that you'd like to be able to see what else we can do. All of our customer service and tech support is right here in the U.S., 24 by 7. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us, full knowledge base options, including full professional services. And we're also a subscription-based solution. So if you do decide to speak with me further, if you wouldn't mind, a few pieces of information to have would be you're currently working with a CRM partner today, and also what your monthly email volume is so we can properly fit you in a good subscription option prior to even speaking the first time. So any additional questions from there? I'm sure you'll be able to receive my information from the folks at Dynamics World, and I look forward to speaking to you again. All right. Thanks, Andy. Uh, yeah, and we will have your contact information up at the end, and uh, folks can also follow up here uh, if they have a question that they want to get at, answered at the end of the session, too. All right, great. Uh, we are now going to move on to our next speaker, and that is Nate Keefe from Scribe Software. Nate, I'm going to give you control now. And uh, that's going to, I guess, stop Andy's uh, sharing. I'm also going to open up your line, Nate. All right, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you just great. All right, great. We're getting a tiny bit of background noise from you, but it sh should be fine. All right, let me know if it comes back. Um, and again, uh, thanks to the Microsoft Dynamics World for having me today. Uh, I'm Nate Keefe. I've been with a company called Scribe Software for uh, about three years now. Um, and as a sales engineer with Scribe, uh, I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of different companies, you know, to solve their problem where they have information and data about their customers in different data sources. So uh, today, I wanted to talk with you, give you some examples of how you can use that data and have a better sense of involvement uh, with your customers by, by knowing more about them, what they know already, already know about you, and, and just, you know, having a more informed view of their prospect of, like, what your company is about. So to kind of set the stage, you know, I want to talk to you about, you know, how the proliferation of data creates a problem for your business. And if you're not on top of that, it's going to impact your ability to work with your customers in, in the most informed way. So there's an external influence out there. It's namely the Internet where there's blogs, review sites, social media, and your consumers have access to this. So providing them, you know, information about your company and its products and services. Um, so today, as you know, you know, you aren't in control of that discovery process. Your customers are. So these prospects are going to engage you much later in their process than they did before. And they can get, you know, much of the way through all their research and discovery before you even know about them. So once you learn about this prospect, you know, you get their name or their email or they hit up one of your landing pages, um, you might be already interacting them with them with other different systems. So companies today are using, you know, inbound marketing tools, web meeting software, you know, marketing automation apps to generate these leads. And each of these apps are storing this valuable information about those leads. So with, with cloud business applications, you know, the line of business managers can go out, they can make decisions to start using an app without involving the IT team. So they can find an app that they like that's going to help their line of business, and, and they can go out and start a trial right away. So there's no special hardware needed for that. If they decide to purchase it, they're just going to do it with a credit card. And most of these SaaS apps have, you know, a lower startup cost and predictable operating expenses. So those applications that they're buying are, are purpose-built for those functions. And even though they may share similar types of data about the customers, uh, they have different data models where they're not really built to talk with each other. So in this way, the cloud apps are actually going out and enabling this internal influence to create more data silos about your customers. So you have an external and internal influence that are causing, you know, more data to be collected, uh, but the data is disconnected. So companies also have systems and applications for customer support and, and ERP and, of course, you know, CRM. And each of these has a slice of that of the customer data, the full view of a customer, and they're usually not connected. So this leaves you with more data silos. So how do you get on top of that situation and, and use it to be more, you know, have more information about your prospects and customers, and then that, use that data in different contexts to drive action and engagement with your customers. So my advice to you is, is think about what good service feels like when you interact with other companies, you know, when they know and, and understand you, so, and then just treat others the way you want to be treated. So you can do this by using CRM to its fullest. 
So really getting you know a full view of your customers. So I have a couple different examples here. So in my CRM system, I have a bunch of different accounts here, and this is just the information that my users are storing in CRM about them. But using, using a product out there, Scribe, I can go out and have Scribe go out and look at other different applications in, in those data styles to pull in more information. So for example, on this account, it was a little too quick for me, so I'm gonna bring you back. When I went and clicked this account, Scribe went out to another system, another silo, and it's loading ERP information about that customer. So I'm gonna know if they're in a credit hold right now. So when I'm calling them, when I'm talking to this customer, I need to know what their financial status is with my company. And so this is, you know, I put my CRM user hat on, I'm in that persona. I wanna know things from the finance side, or I wanna know things from the marketing side. So I can just go out, and I'm not even persisting this data with CRM. So I can easily go out and find information about my customers. And so this is really an example of, you know, a very low complexity data integration, but it's adding a high value uh, to what I need on my business. So another example of this might be, you know, as I'm working with this, you know, my sales team and their transactions are increasing, you can now, you know, expand your integrations to those other systems. And so by bringing in and, and sending out records, I can work with, you know, the ERP systems. So with, with these accounts, I can go out and as a sales user, I can create quotes, you know, configure those, price those out, and all in CRM, but then send that data, push that to another system. And so by talking with other systems, I don't need to go send an email to finance that says that I, you know, this is my new customer, here's their address information, um, you know, they just purchased these five or six line items. I'll do that right from CRM, I'll submit that order, and have an engine that really takes that, pushes that to the other system. Again, as your needs mature, you can have those be bi-directional. So we could see what's the statuses of these orders. So when I submit it, CRM hat, I'm submitting the order, any changes from there would be from a finance user. So they're gonna invoice them, or, or they're gonna be able to cancel it or put it on hold. And so this account here that you're looking at here, you know, it's showing the sales orders and, and invoices with those statuses. Um, and so these are all, you know, working with the Dynamics ERP system. So again, right in CRM, I'm able to go and find out what's the order number in that ERP system. So if I need to go look at the status, if I need to call someone up from finance, I have that information readily available to me. So think about if you're starting out your data integrations, when you're planning these projects, really consider what are gonna be the most valuable data needed in your CRM system to, to start your project. So looking at this chart, uh, you know, start with the high value projects that are doable. You know, you're gonna get early momentum, show the results and, and get buy-in from your company. And that's really, you know, think about that as kind of the top left up here. So it's easy to kind of grab information from external sources, the, the credit history, open support tickets, you know, the latest marketing campaign results, et cetera. Then you can move on to the more complex projects, you know, so consider the data that exists in other systems that could be copied over in your CRM. So the, the order history, webinar attendees, you know, HR or payroll information. So as your company grows, so your integration needs and, and those will mature as well. So then you'll be able to start, you know, building out a business process around bi-directional integration and, and linking to your different silos, whether they're in the cloud or on-premise, you know, from, from inbound marketing tools to CRM, ERP support, or, or even marketing automation. And so if you're serious about doing this, um, you should really be using, you know, an integration platform rather than just treating this integration like, you know, one of those apps. So get a platform out there that's gonna let you, you know, get a fast start and really good pace with that by having connectivity to all of your different applications and, and other popular applications out there that you might purchase down the road. And one that's also gonna be able to adapt to your processes and, and application changes that, that doesn't require you to have a developer on staff, you know, another, another headcount on that budget, if you will. 
so that's what we do at Scribe. So Scribe, you know, we're, we offer an on-premise and a cloud-based integration platforms to really enable our customers to go out and, and bring data together from their business systems to get more value out of those systems. So we've been selling, you know, directly or, or through partners to, you know, through hundreds of partners to thousands of customers, resellers and, and system integrators. So we don't really work with a particular industry, but rather we're, we're working across everybody. So the, the data is really agnostic to us. So to give you an idea about what that all looks like, we have a solution, it's called Scribe Online. It's a cloud-based integration platform. It moves data between on-prem and on-prem, cloud to cloud, or a hybrid of the two. So to give you an idea about how somebody reasonably technical can go out and build these maps, they log into the portal, they create connections to their endpoint. So for example, if I connect to Dynamic CRM, all I really need is you know my username and password and I'm going to connect to that local or hosted or online CRM instance and be able to visually design how I want to move that data. So Scribe gives you blocks that represent the operations you want to perform against that system. So when I connect to CRM as a source, I want to pull data out of that and push that into an ERP system. I'll pull out a query block. This means I want to get some data out of my CRM system. I'll configure this to say, all right, what entity do I need to get data out of? And, and Scribe's going to tell you every entity that you have in your CRM system, whether it's custom or not. So if I want to take account data, I can go out, I can put filters on it, you know, just like your advanced finds, and say, for every account that I get for each result, I'm just visually building this out. Let's go check out my ERP system, Great Plains, for example. I get another set of blocks that lets me decide what I want to do with this integration. So I'm querying accounts. That's going to match up with a customer in my ERP. So instead of creating a customer every time, I want to go out, I want to make a decision by looking up that customer. I'll define that criteria for how I want to look up that customer. I'll make a decision point in Scribe with an if-else block. So this means that if, if I find that customer, let's do an update. Let's update that customer we found. Else, if we don't find it, let's go to the self branch and we'll create a brand new customer. And that's as, you know, this is just your basic logic right down from the top to the bottom, how I configure what I want my integration to do. And inside of each of these blocks, I get to decide what I want to do with them. So if I want to go out and create a customer, it's going to load the fields and I'll be able to map from my source on the left, dynamic CRM, every field that I have, I can go over here to my right on GP, be able to map from A to B, or I can put formulas around that. So I can say, just like you use in Excel, I can do if and then else, or I can do lookups and, and manipulate that data before I send it over because not every system is going to match up exactly. So with our platform, you're able to connect to lots of different CRMs, ERPs, marketing automations, your legacy databases, even, even text files if you want to automate those import processes. So when you're getting started with these integrations, you know, really just as a recap, you know, we talked about a bunch of different numbers of problems out there that, that cause, you know, your data silos. And there's external influences, and but there's also internal influences. So the external ones are really caused by the Internet and that the customers have control over really that discovery process. Um, we also kind of talked about the internal ones. Those line of businesses out there that, you know, especially with Cloud Apps, they can make your data silo problem even worse. So I have some examples out there, of different types of data integrations that could help your teams and, and marketing and sales systems and even customer success have kind of a more informed and personalized engagement with your customers. Uh, so with the right strategy and tools, there's no reason why you can't really take control of your data and, and really drive to a new level of, of personalized and, and customer engagement. So for next steps, um, I'd really like to, you know, invite you guys to check out, you know, some case studies and, and white papers on our on our Scribe website. So check out, you know, 
case studies from, from a vertical that you guys are in, you know, from your lines of business. See what other people out there in the entertainment industry or, or marketing industry has done with those integrations. Um, and then come and talk to us. Talk to us about the data integrations. What are the possibilities, you know, within your company and your applications that, you know, you might get value from? Um, so we're all happy to talk to you. Here's kind of our contact information. And so I hope that was really valuable for you guys today. All right, thanks, Nate. Um, if you want to stop sharing, uh, we will be moving now to our next presenter. That is uh, Stephanie of Perceptive Software. And Stephanie, I'm going to give you control, and I'm also going to open up your phone line here in just one moment. Okay, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you see my screen okay? We're not seeing your screen yet. Um, can you go to the share menu in the upper left? Hold on. There we go. All right. Yep. Now it's coming up. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. I am going to talk to you a little bit about how you can add some more power to your CRM capabilities. Um, everybody knows that Microsoft Dynamics is a very powerful tool already. And with Perceptive Interact for Microsoft Dynamics, we, we kind of add just a little more power to what you already have today. So I'm just going to walk through kind of what that means. And first, I just kind of want to talk about a challenge that I think all of us have. And one of those challenges is when you're looking for a file or a document or an invoice or a contract, you have the customer on the phone, you have the vendor on the phone, you know you just had it, or the one you're pulling up is not the most recent one, and it's frustrating, and then you have to call them back, so now you have another item on your to-do list, and it's, it's frustrating because you know the information's there, it just sometimes seems impossible to find, or it's just not at your fingertips. And another thing that, that really frustrates, I know, me is when I put together information for someone internally, and then they ask me three more times in the next week, hey, can you send that back to me? Um, it's something that should just be at your fingertips. You should be able to go in and access that information, whether it's on a, you know, a sales account or a vendor account or a customer support. Any type of that, any information like that should be at your fingertips. It's, it's frustrating on both sides of the fence. I've, I've definitely been the customer where I kind of question what those people are doing over there because I've sent that information or I've given that information a hundred times and here I have to give it again. So it does get a little frustrating that you can't find that information. You have to go to 20 different places. And that's why it, it just gets so difficult is none of us have one system anymore. I am going to divulge my age a little bit, but I remember the day when you, you had WordPerfect. So you either had a file cabinet or one place to go for information. And obviously the file cabinet, it was a little harder to find than in the computer system because everybody used one system. And now I think um, at least the last count I checked, I had at least 15 systems that I had to use for one thing or another. So it's, it's difficult in today's world to just have one system containing all the information that you need. And it gets a little frustrating and things get a little convoluted. Um, but we all have those core systems, those, those two or three core systems that we use on a daily basis, and those are, those are really the important areas. And for someone who uses a CRM system, you know, all day, every day, there's nothing more frustrating than I have to go out and go back in, I have to go out and go back in. So what we're, we're, we're trying to do is allow people to, you know, capture that image, whether it's, you know, from a paper or from another system, bring it into our system, and allowing them to view that information from the CRM itself. So basically what you're, being, what you're allowing your users to do is from the CRM system, they can pull up the information they need right within there. They don't have to go anywhere else. So they can find that information on that customer or on that vendor, and the most important part is they can set up what important information is to them. So I'm going to show you just a, a quick little screenshot here in a little bit of what that looks like. But basically, every user, based on their security rights, can now have access to the information they need, most current, and what's important to them. So they're not digging through things, they're not having to call customers back or vendors back or, or hoping that they have the right document or, or being frustrated because they don't have the most current information in front of them. 
So Perceptive Interact for Microsoft Dynamics CRM really gives users the immediate visibility into all of the data associated with their accounts. It brings their integrated process and content management technology into the CRM environment. It's fully integrated with Perceptive Process, so we have uh, business process tools, we have content management technology. Uh, your users never have to leave the CRM to actually take advantage of those functionality and features. You'll have access to customer documents throughout the enterprise, comprehensive view of those documents within the CRM, so not only can you see the documents you need, but you can pull them right up in the viewer within the CRM, so no need, again, to leave the CRM at all. And the power of Perceptive Interact for CRM is, is the centralized document storage and retrieval. So you're not running all over the place. You're not looking at different systems. You're not trying to figure out where it is that you put that document the last time you had it. Maybe it was two years ago. Maybe it was a week ago. Um, you're able to capture documents, whether it's on demand. Um, you can do it from a mobile device. You can do it via drag and drop. It can happen virtually from anywhere within the CRM. You can manage those electronic documents. You can see where they're at in the process because within your viewer, you're going to be able to see that workflow process and the status of that document. So if you are in a customer service environment, maybe you're, you're looking at uh, a support customer and you can see that their contract hasn't expired yet or it has expired yet, and maybe there in the notes comment it says, you know, go ahead and support them because we're in talks of, or negotiations of, of revising that contract. So there's just so many ways that having that integration can help efficiently and immediately help those customers, but it also makes your employees happier, makes their jobs less frustrating, which is always good. So here I just wanna give you a quick screenshot of what our CRM integration looks like in action. So if you look here, um, the Microsoft Dynamics screen, you can see a little view area where it says ImageNow Documents, and that is perceptive content. And basically what it's going to pull up for you is that list of documents associated with that customer. So, you know, Jane, she's on the, the phone or she's looking up at a customer contract. So she's just in her CRM and she wants to see all those contracts. And she notices that there's two most current from 2010-2012. And she go ahead, she clicks on the most current version to look at what the contract consists of. And then she's able to determine, you know, I can call this customer, we can renew this contract, we can add these products and services that will benefit them. Um, and this is obviously just one example, but this, this would also be the case for, say, an invoice or um, maybe a customer service ticket, um, maybe a warranty, a service contract, a vendor contract, anything of the sort can be put into that view area. And although we don't have the fields customized here, those fields can be customized any way you want. So like I said, you, you can see the status of the workflow. You can see the status of the contract. You can see a notes column. You can see a created um, date. All that information can be available to you right within the CRM. Perceptive Software is a Lexmark company and basically what we help you do is bridge the gap between your enterprise applications. So we not only integrate with Microsoft Dynamics CRM, but we integrate with many other systems. We have enterprise search, business process management, and we basically help you improve financial performance and reduce risk and ensure future flexibility. And here's just a look at our product family. So I've, I've mentioned a few things here. We have the ability to capture, and that's from any device, anywhere. We also have intelligent capture that allows you to bring um, information into the system automatically, so you don't have to have a user putting the metadata associated with the system. Again, this is useful when it comes to making sure that that information is correct and available in the CRM, so that can happen automatically for you. We just manage the content with, with forms capabilities, business process management, and again, enterprise search that you don't have to be in our software to search for information. You can search through the Microsoft CRM information. You can search through other content management systems, um, also social websites. And I, I went through that kind of quickly, but that is the gist of what we have available, and I would be more than happy to go into a full demo 
or answer any questions on our Microsoft CRM integration, I do want to point out that um, the CRM integration is completely customizable. So depending on what documents you want to see or what fields you need to see to be relevant to your users, we can easily help you set that up. And it's so easy that the customers manage it themselves after they've set it up once. So it's something that's completely customizable for your users. <laughs> All right, well, Stephanie, thank you very much. Um, we are uh, now going to move on to take a few questions from the audience. Again, you can enter your questions in the lower right. You should see a Q&A block where you can uh, where you can type in your questions, and we'll uh, we'll do our best to give all uh, three of our presenters a chance to um, oh thank you um, to uh, to to answer the questions that do come in. In case you want to reach out, um, uh, oh, and I just spotted a typo. Apologies for that. Um, to either Stephanie, Nate, or uh, Andy, you can uh, reach out to them here. Here are their email addresses, and um, we'll uh, we'll actually send an updated version of this slide as well. So. Um, we do have one question that came in already, and this is something that actually I think all three of you could probably um, answer in probably different ways, uh, given your uh, your specialties. But um, you know, the question of you know why would I need a, a specialized solution to handle these these added capabilities as opposed to what say a dynamic CRM can handle out of the box? Um, that was a question came that, that came in a little while ago, and. Uh, I thought I'd give, maybe give all of you a chance to to answer that one. Um, and why don't we uh, start uh, where we uh, with uh, the first presenter today, which was Andy. Um, Andy, is that, is that a question you're over here? And, and how do you like to handle that? Oh, I'm sorry, Andy, you are still on mute. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, so typically with different third-party solutions outside of Dynamics, and I think I can probably speak for all of us today when it it comes down to. We look for, for things inside of CRM where that capability isn't really inherent inside of Dynamics today, being able to find that solution that a lot of people need, in our case, email marketing automation. Now, not to say that the marketing automation in Dynamics is not able to meet the task, it's just we offer different custom entities that Dynamics doesn't currently have today, from the web intelligence and different analytic options that are available, being able to create those bulk emails and have all the information captured back into the contact and lead records, all the web forms and surveys we create. So the functionality that we offer is different, but it also lives inside of that CRM instance at the same time. So by having that availability and creating that single sign-in scenario, which is what we're all trying to do to really universalize data and make sure it's able to be used, it's not something that Dynamics has all the capabilities in the world to do, which is why there's companies like us. All right, great. Um, Nate, uh, do you have a perspective on this one? Yeah, you know, why, why would somebody use Scribe to, to import their data or, or integrate it, you know, versus what's already available in CRM? Um, so, so first of all, you know, not everyone can have, you know, the exact type of data type that's needed to import new leads in CRM. And even when using that out-of-the-box configuration, sometimes it's a little faith-based. You know, sometimes you're kind of worried that not all my leads got in there. And so by using a middleware, by using something like Scribe, you really can grasp the flow of the data, how you want to move it in there. Do I want to go out and, and look for a contact before I import this lead? You know, little things like that. Um, in Microsoft, you know, they have, they have connectors with some of their other ERP suites. Um, and again, it's all around the customization around that. Your business probably doesn't work the way that that CRM and, and ERP connector came out of the box. So using something like Scribe, you can really go to market quickly to customize it the way that your business works. All right, and Stephanie. Yeah, and I think I think we're kind of all in agreement in that um, each one of us offers a little something specialized to add and make the CRM more powerful. And I know, um, you know, I myself use Salesforce a lot, and we also integrate with Salesforce and. I, just having those documents right there in the tool that I'm using is so extremely helpful. Um, I know that um, the capabilities, there are some capabilities in the CRM, but we have, you know, we work with Microsoft to make sure that we are a complement to them and that we work well within their system and it's very customizable. And I think what our users really like is that, you know, once you start adding information to a CRM, after five years, there's so much information there. There's there's no real nice, clean way to present it. 
and with our functionality, we kind of just make that a little better, and we make it a little more, more efficient for the end user themselves. All right. Um, we, we have actually a sort of a point question here for you, Stephanie. Um, does your solution um, mask any Dynamics uh, uh, features? Um, can you clarify mask any Dynamics offerings? Uh, my, yeah, we can ask the uh, the person who asked that to maybe uh, to maybe clarify what they were what they were uh, take the place of. Uh, and I think um, it's features, not offerings, is what I would guess. And I guess we, we kind of take the place of, because, I mean, you can store documents in Dynamics CRM. Um, we just have a, a more robust ability to sort, view, search those documents without ever leaving the CRM. So I, I wouldn't, I still say that we complement what they offer. Um, I don't know that I would say we, we would take the place of, of any of their feature functionality. Um, we, we definitely consider of ourselves a complement to their, their functionality. All right, great. Uh, one other question that I could probably throw out to all of you here that, um, that you know, I hear pretty often is, or it's more of a challenge, is that, you know, adding additional capabilities to CRM um, really tests uh, an organization's, um, you know, user adoption skills and, and the ability to, you know, essentially add new features uh, to something that they already work very hard to, to drive adoption on. Um, are there any best practices that, that you like to bring to, uh, to new customers when they're looking at adding um, adding, uh, you know, even a, even more uh, specialized capabilities on top of CRM um, that you like to, would maybe like to leave folks with today. Um, and uh, why don't we start uh, this time with Nate. Yes, so, so think about that two-by-two two graph that I talked about. Start with, start with something that's achievable. Start with something that you could say, yes, no, we did this. Measure the ROI on that. That's where you start. And then as you get to be more complex with, with your integrations, when you have that user adoption, you can get, you know, you can go through phases and say, all right, now that we have all the customer information from all our different data sources, let's look into getting more, more of a view about our leads. Uh, and so by doing it that phase of pros, you, you can kind of say, you can even, you know, get more user adoption because people are now going to be in CRM more often because they have information that they need. All right, um, Stephanie? Yeah, I think one of the most important things, and, and you know, I work with customers on change management a lot, and that um, it has to be familiar to the customer. So anything that integrates with the CRM, if they have to do something differently or something looks different or, you know, it, it's not a good flow, you're going to have low, low user adoption. So the more integrated it is, and I, I, I'm going to throw out there the prettier that it looks in the CRM, the more the users are going to be able to adopt to it and use it. All right. And uh, Andy? Well, my answer is pretty similar to uh, the other two presenters today. It's all about just having the ability for that person to, to view the information in one place. And with Core Motives, you're creating visibility. So the data that you would normally have in a very disparate third-party system, perhaps lack of integration there, is now going to be available. So that salesperson, that customer service rep, that account manager, any of your marketing teams that need the information, when you're looking at that information in one place, chances are more people are going to use it. And because we look and feel exactly like dynamic CRM because of our our automated provisioning process and our embedded integration, the ramp up time is going to be that much more quick for you as well. And because it's all in one place, everyone can utilize it in ways they never could before. So it's a great jumping off point to be able to do it. We also have a professional services team in house to help with additional training if necessary, and a fantastic knowledge base also to help to navigate through some of the feature sets that are available. All right. Well, we are at the end of our uh, question queue here, so uh, we can start wrapping up. Uh, as folks do leave today, please do look for the survey that will pop up after uh, after you leave the session. We really appreciate feedback that you can provide to us and our speakers. Um, so, uh, Stephanie, Nate, and uh, Andy, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thanks and, for having us. Well, thank you. Yeah, and and uh, it was a lot of fun. And thanks to the audience for uh, for sh for being here, for asking some questions, and uh, we hope it was useful to you. So with that, we will uh, end the session and say have a great day.
Thank you. Thank you again.